I am out here having a wonderful morning stroll by the sea. But what if I told you that the water I'm in right now could be filled with invisible threats? Harmful chemicals, plastics, and other pollutants are entering the ocean every day. And it affects not only marine life, but ecosystems in general, including the water we swim in. But there are surprising allies in the fight against this threat. And today we will dive into how tiny, often overlooked organisms are helping us fight pollution. We might even hear from an expert. Let's just dive right in into the first episode of The Most Unlikely Marine Heroes. And there's a huge wave. <laughs> Let's take a journey back over 500 million years ago to a time when life in the ocean was vastly different from what we know today. The Cambrian period, a time when the seas were filled with new and strange creatures. Among these early pioneers, something extraordinary was about to emerge. Amidst the hustle of predators and prey, a few organisms developed a strategy that was both simple and revolutionary. Instead of chasing down their food, these creatures began to filter it directly from the water. Early filter feeders like primitive sponges and brachiopods developed specialized structures like pores and cells that allowed them to capture microscopic food particles, like plankton, drifting in the water. This new way of feeding was unlike anything seen before. The oceans were a treasure trove of tiny organisms floating freely in vast numbers. By filtering them directly from the water, these early filter feeders tapped into a limitless food source. Fast forward to around 450 million years ago, and we see the emergence of more complex filter feeders, the ancestors of today's bivalves. These creatures took filter feeding to a whole new level. With their hinged shells and specialized gills, they could filter vast amounts of water, extracting every bit of nourishment. But this was only the beginning of bivalve lore. Bivalves are a class of aquatic mollusks that have laterally compressed soft bodies enclosed by a calcified exoskeleton consisting of a pair of half shells. Okay, that might not sound super cool or cute. And I mean, visually, they are also not super exciting. I mean, their shells are beautiful. Their squishy bodies, well, debatable. But they did take over the world, geographically speaking. The sheer amount of shells in beaches all around the world are a testament to that. As the world changed over millions of years, so did they. Their remarkable adaptability and the continued refinement of their filter feeding abilities allow them to spread to different marine environments from shallow coastal waters to the deep sea. Their tough protective shells help them survive predators while their filter feeding method allowed them to thrive in waters where food was abundant, but often microscopic. Over time, bivalves became more efficient at what they did. But how did this ability that developed over millions of years before the first humans even walked the earth help us today? To understand more about these ancient, unassuming, but pretty cool animals and the role they play in today's changing oceans, I went to San Benedetto del Tronto to talk to researcher Martina Capriotti. She studies bivalves and their relationship with different types of marine pollutants. So bivalves are incredible animals. Mm -hmm. I know we envision them like in a pasta bowl. <laughs> Uh, but seafood. Uh, seafood, yeah, <laughs> pasta with uh, marinara sauce, you know. <laughs> but actually, they are super. They have a super interesting anatomy, physiology, and even ecology. They filter all the plankton and food particles that are suspended in the water. Uh, so they feed in the invisible, basically. Yeah. In some regions, a single oyster can filter up to 190 liters of water per day. This natural filtration process not only clears the water, but also helps maintain the balance of marine ecosystems. And one individual mussel can filter up to one liter of water per hour. So long. And okay, okay. At this point, I know what some of you are thinking. You know where I like my bivalves? In my plate. 
act. Sure, that's your prerogative. But did you know that the main characteristic that makes these mollusks a culinary success has downsides for their consumers, but potentially upsides to their environment? The same characteristic. Also another characteristic of the mussels or other bivalves is that they have a high level of lipids inside of fat and this is pretty good for our health. That's why they are an important part of the Mediterranean diet or the diet of many population on the planet actually. But on the other side, they can by accumulate some uh, uh, pollutants that are present in the water. This is of course bad news for any bivalve consuming animal. That's why bivalve farming usually follows quite stringent monitoring protocols. However, it's because they accumulate chemicals that we can use bivalves as something called bioindicators. These are organisms that can determine water quality. Contaminated bivalves are likely to have been living in contaminated water and we can measure them to assess that. And not only can they be used to monitor water quality, but they might also be used to improve it in a process called bioremediation, the process of using organisms to remove environmental pollutants. It's, however, important to note that their filtration abilities vary between species and environmental factors. And there's quite still a lot we don't know about them. Nevertheless, it has been well documented that they are effective in removing both chemicals and bacteria from the water. For example, in one study, mussels removed around 72% of the studied bacteria from a trout farm effluent. But bacteria and chemicals are not the only thing bivalves remove from the water. When excess nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen enter the ocean through rivers and streams, often from agriculture runoff and wastewater. They can lead to harmful algal blooms and other environmental issues. Bivalves play a crucial role in transferring nutrients from the water column to the seafloor, contributing to the development of communities in the seafloor and shaping the environment around them. Today, this process could help counteract the input access nutrients in coastal areas by filtering them from the water as they feed. This process not only supports the health of benthic communities, but also helps remove the excess nutrients from remaining in the water column, where they could contribute to pollution and ecosystem imbalances. That is why many have turned to bivalve farming, like mussels and oysters, as a way to farm seafood in a less environmentally harmful way. Okay, so let's recap. We now know that bivalves are delicious, I guess for some, can remove chemicals and nutrients from the water, and there's one more thing. They might also filter out some microplastic particles from the water, which bad for the animal, probably, but to what extent they actually filter different types of microplastics and how that will impact the environment and the animal is still under investigation. Despite there being a lot we don't know about their role in the fight against pollution and how that will affect the animals themselves and their environment, we do know that they have played a very important role in nutrient cycling and water filtration for millennia, and still do today. However, bivalves themselves are, of course, under threat. Surprise! Overharvesting, habitat loss, climate change and pollution have led to significant declines in bivalve populations worldwide. The very creatures that help clean our oceans are struggling to survive in them. Uh, it's uh, summertime uh, and uh, we are not happy about the the heat uh, and the neither. So basically we observed uh, since a few years uh, uh, a massive die-off of uh, mussels uh, along this area. Mm -hmm. Mussels that live uh, pretty coastal, like mm -hmm. on the natural reef, and uh, at some point, uh, close to the end of the summer, right after the heat wave, mm -hmm. uh, they started to die. And so that was super weird, because mussels are new to be uh, like pretty resistant, uh, to be to uh, bear like differences of um, temperature, differences of salinity, uh, of harsh condition. So seeing a mussel die is oh my god, that's something weird happening okay, in we the have ocean. To pay attention yeah. to this. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So we observed uh, this phenomenon, and there's already a little article about this observation, and now we are monitoring since a couple of years this phenomenon to see how the um, heat. Uh, 
the, the heat, the heat wave uh, is, are affecting the local population. The effect of heat waves on mollusks is something for another time, but things are changing. The oceans are changing. And researchers like Martina and conservationists around the world are working to better understand how these changes will affect these animals and their feeding superpowers. We need to protect them for them to protect us. Thank you, Martina. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> I know bivalves are not very cute or exciting, despite many people thinking they are delicious. But they are these creatures that conduct this very important filtration process, which makes them a very important ally in monitoring pollution and controlling it. So they do need our love. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.